Hello, everyone. Thanks for your interest. I'm Ying Tingting from Tsinghua University. I'm really sorry I can't share this paper with you in person, but I hope this video can explain the main ideas of key activities with you clearly. In this paper, we proposed a gray box interface of your father named KXTFAS to fast kernel extensions in Apple Silicon Mac devices. MacOS kernel extensions can be considered as the drivers of MacOS. They run in the kernel mode, bringing a larger attack surface for MacOS. Most of the kernel extensions are closed source. Driver fuzzing is not a new topic. Quantities of works have discussed how to identify driver interfaces via source code analysis and how to collect the coverage via source code level instrumentation. But when it comes to closed source drivers, things become a little complex. Existing work use other spots like system invocation traces, hardware support, and hypervisors to facilitate fuzz. However, Apple Silicon Mac OS makes things even harder. Except for closed source kernel extensions, Apple Silicon Mac devices also do not provide hardware support like InterPT, which is generally used to collect the coverage information in binary fuzzing. The virtualization and the kernel debugging support are also very poor in this system. Previous works have tried to infer interface structures from system traces. But it comes out that only a little part of kernel extension interfaces can be included in the traces. And unlike the general system calls, operating systems usually do not provide header files for the interface of drivers. The special environment of Apple Silicon Mac OS makes there little support we can use to facilitate for us. But our curiosity about this new operating system leads us to dig deeper into it. Interestingly, we found there are abundant mitigations in macOS. These mitigations bring challenges for dynamic testing on the one side, but provide us extra information and resources to support fuzzing on the other side. Firstly, the point of authentication mitigation in macOS kernel helps us to enable binary level instrumentation, which is used for coverage collection. Binary level instrumentation is usually hard because the structures of binary files are tight. As shown in the picture, once we add new instructions to the binary, the other instructions will be moved. As a result, the offsides between instructions and the data will be changed. Binary code uses offsides as reference com commonly. Such reference errors in drivers will make the system crash during fuzzing, consuming a lot of times. However, we found that the point of authentication instructions are widely distributed in kernel extension binaries. These instructions are designed to guard kernel extensions against malicious pointer modification in real-world attacks. However, they can be neglected in fuzzing scenario. Firstly, we do not need to protect the system from attackers during fuzzing, and secondly, the pointer corrupted by random fuzzing inputs can usually crash the system itself without pointer authentication protection. Therefore, we can remove these instructions in the binary, and the living space can be used to add coverage collection instructions. Secondly, we remove the entitlement checks in kernel extensions to test the code which are privileged and lack of test. MacOS uses entitlement checks wildly. The entitlements are strings that are hard-coded in program code signatures. Most of entitlements are only assigned to the Apple applications. Therefore, programs like Fathers developed by the third parties cannot call many privileged code. This restriction makes this code lack of test, but the attackers can still exploit vulnerabilities in protected code by building exploit chains. Therefore, we hook the entitlement check functions in kernel extension. No matter which entitlement is required, the hooker function will always return true for the checks. Thus, the father can test the privileged code as normal code. Lastly, KXTFAS uses the system isolation layer to extract kernel extension interface knowledge. MacOS kernel extension interfaces can be very complex. Except of scalars, pointers, and structures, 
macOS also uses strings and serialized expressions to pass arrays, dictionaries, and other complex data formats as kernel extension arguments. And some of the inputs should be return should be the return value of other interface invocations. Complex interface structures make it hard for father to generate valid input. However, the wrapper binaries in macOS provide us with extra interface information. These wrappers include system frameworks, dynamic libraries, and daemons. They are developed by Apple, which means they are calling kernel extensions in the most standard ways. KXDFAS uses a lightweight multi-tag tent analysis method to extract the knowledge from kernel extensions. It sets 10 tags on the 10 sources and lets the 10 tags create to the kernel extension invocations. The 10 sources include the arguments of interface color functions, the return value of object creation functions, the output of kernel extension interfaces, and global variables. For example, once KActiveFuzz recognizes there is a variable created by the malloc function, it will know this field is a pointer. The tent analysis is implemented based on emulation execution. To save time, we only analyze the KXT invocation related code passes. KXT files groups the registers and memories into 32 bit unit. In each unit, KXT files uses the high bits to record the tent source and the detailed information. Before emulation execution, KXT files initializes the registers and memories with the encoded 10 value, and the 10 tag will automatically propagate during the execution. Therefore, KXT files does not have to write complex 10 propagation rules. In the evaluation part, we evaluate the overall performance of KXT files and analyze how much does each part contribute to the bug detection. KXT files can instrument about 34% of basic blocks by replacing pointer authentication instructions. The coverage collection instrumentation imposes about two times overhead. Although not all the blocks are instrumented, the coverage information they provide can generally reflect the depths and the widths of the further tested code. This method can not only be used in Apple Silicon macOS kernel extensions, Mitigation instructions like Intel CT and Canary can also be replaced. We have successfully instrumented Linux user space binaries in a similar way. The interface structures identified by KXT files and the entitlement check filter can significantly improve the code coverage. The overall coverage reached by KXT files also outperforms the state of the art work says Gene. In the bug finding part, KXT files finds 48 bugs, 5 of them have been assigned CVEs, and 3 of them get bounties. KXT files find 6 times more crashes than a black box baseline finding solution in 24 hours. The interface analyzer helps KXT files find 2 complex bugs and find 2 bugs faster. The entitlement filter helps KXT files find 80 bugs nested in the privileged code. The bug finding result also demonstrates that fuzzing on Apple Silicon devices is necessary. Also, macOS cross compile some characters into both x86 and ARM versions. KXT files finds 13 bugs in ARM only KXTs. That's the overall introduction of KXT files. More details of KXT files can be found in the paper. As a conclusion, in this work, we proposed a father named KXT files which can fuzz Apple Silicon macOS kernel extensions. The biggest feature of KXT files is that it does not rely on the common support like source code, hardware, or hypervisors. All it needs is a bootable system. The minimized dependencies makes it workable in macOS. More specifically, we replace the point authentication code in kernel extensions to do coverage instrumentation, removing entitlement checks to test the privileged code, and collect the interface information from the wrapper layers. Thanks for your listening. My email address is shown on the screen. Any questions are welcome.